everybody! I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the differences between delirium and dementia. The point of this video is to kind of talk about like the big stuff, the key factors that separate the two, because these two conditions do get mixed up a lot. So we're going to break it down for you, the most important things, starting with delirium. So delirium causes disturbances in cognition, attention, memory, and perception for our patients. And I do want to point out, both of these conditions are more likely to happen in the older adult. Delirium has a pathological cause. Things like infection, like a UTI or a respiratory infection. Pain, hypoxia, drug toxicity, and constipation. Now, some of these things are kind of not unique to the older adult, but are more common in the older adult. For example, because of the normal changes of the body that occur with aging, the older adult is more likely to have drug toxicity. They're also more likely to be constipated. So they are a higher risk group when it comes to experiencing delirium, just because of those normal physiological changes of aging. The onset for delirium is rapid. So you took care of your patient yesterday, they were completely normal and fine. Now this morning you're taking care of them and they're a completely different person and you're like, whoa, what happened? Okay. It can cause a decreased level of consciousness. It doesn't always, but it is possible that your patient could become unconscious or drowsy. It is variable over a 24 hour period. So they might be acting a little differently in the morning than they are in the afternoon. Maybe they seem like they're a little bit better then they get worse. So their condition varies over a 24 hour period. They may experience things like mood swings, disturbed sleep, tremors, hallucinations, decreased memory and decreased attention. I do want to point out, if your patient is experiencing things like hallucinations, it is not appropriate for you, the nurse, to go along with those. Don't feed into their hallucinations. That's more dangerous. And it is reversible with the treatment of the cause, so that's a good thing. This is an acute thing. It is not permanent. And once we figure out what the issue is here, we can fix it, and that's a great thing. Our nursing interventions for this patient population can include, of course, treating the cause once we figure out what it is, nutrition, antibiotics, especially if we know it's an infection. A big common cause of delirium is a UTI. It's a UTI. So antibiotics will help treat that infection and it'll make the delirium go away. We can administer IV fluids if there's an electrolyte imbalance. We can give them oxygen if they're hypoxic. We always want to promote safety and comfort in our patients. So if it's a pain thing, right, let's treat the pain. Control environmental stressors. So while they're in the middle of it, while they're still experiencing the delirium, maybe they're having the hallucinations and things like that, we want to control the things in their environment to keep them safe. Because again, it's all about safety. So those are the most important key facts about delirium. Now let's talk about dementia. Dementia is a slow process that causes the progressive loss of cognitive function. It's caused by damage to the cerebral cortex and the patient with dementia can experience changes in their memory, their judgment, meaning they make impulsive decisions that might be kind of dangerous, their language, so as it gets progressively worse, their ability to understand language or even communicate themselves gets worse, it declines. Abstract thinking, everything becomes very black and white to them. Problem solving, they're more impulsive, which is more of danger. And then of course, confusion. So the patient with dementia could experience any of these things at any point. Unfortunately, unlike delirium, it is not reversible. There is no cure for dementia. People with dementia usually have no change in their level of consciousness. And then it's stable over a 24 hour period. In comparison to delirium, it is stable. 
Some exceptions I do want to make sure I point out. The concept of sundowning. So this is when people who have dementia, they're not bad during the day, they're not having all of these issues or it's not too hard for them to handle during the day, but at nighttime it gets progressively worse and progressively more challenging for them. So that's the concept of sundowning. And then people who have advanced dementia, because there are different levels of dementia, those who have advanced dementia can experience things like hallucinations and delusions. So our nursing interventions for our dementia patients maintain their level of functioning, right? It's all about independence and promoting independence. So maintaining their level of functioning, administering whatever meds as appropriate, making sure they're still hydrated and then properly nourished, they're eating, and then modifying their environment for their own safety and personal comfort. And one thing I do want to point out about this, I know I'm comparing delirium versus dementia. A patient with dementia can also experience delirium. And that's a problem because a lot of people don't catch that, right? Because you go, oh, they have dementia. I already know that about them. And then you're not properly assessing them for delirium. Because people with dementia can get delirium. Think about your dementia patient who maybe gets a UTI right? And now they're delirious through experiencing an acute episode of delirium. They still deserve appropriate assessment and appropriate treatment for that delirium. So that is something I wanted to point out. They can still get delirium and they still deserve to be assessed appropriately and treated appropriately for that. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.